Hey there, I'm Brian Griffin. Press the free like button if you are excited as me and Stewie are that the Roman Reigns reign of terror is officially over. Stewie is currently smoking on a Roman Reigns pack as we speak. I mean, come on, L.A. Knight was a bigger draw than Roman Reigns at this point. Man, listen, we just saw the greatest WrestleMania main event of all time. Thanks to only Cody Rhodes. I'm like, man, right now we are smoking on that Roman Lames hookah pack. That's what we are smoking on. We are smoking on that Rocky Maivia pack. Oh, man, that shit tastes good as fuck. The Roman Reigns hookah pack deluxe. Good Lord. That shit tastes so good, especially the Roman Reigns tears. All of the Rocky Maivia and Roman Lames nut huggers. Goodbye. <laughs> you guys are gone. You are done. Because now you are now the crybabies now. That's crazy. Let's go back to the time machine. The moment Cody Rhodes left All Elite Fake Pro Wrestling, I made a video the next day, right? This was back when people thought it was a work. Nobody thought he was coming to the WWF, but I did. People thought he was going to run a Ring of Honor. And I made countless videos, tons of posts. I told people this guy is going to WrestleMania and he will wrestle Seth Rollins. Nobody believed me, but the moment he left, I said this guy should be the one to dethrone Roman Reigns. That's what I said. People thought I was crazy. People thought I was trolling. Why? Because in all elite wrestling, this dude was not in the main events. This guy was getting booed. He was fighting for TNT championship, but I said to myself, no, man, Vince McMahon is going to push him just to rub it in Tony Khan's face that he fucked up. Um, That aged well, didn't it? Tony Khan man just saw a guy that helped build all elite wrestling. He saw him dethrone the greatest world champion in the last 10 years of this company. That's crazy. This dude has to be punching the air, but people don't know what I've been going through these past two years, past two, three years. I've never left Cody Rhodes. I've never stopped supporting Cody Rhodes. I don't, I don't back jobbers. I back winners. So, how in the hell did I predict this? The moment he left, bro, people thought contract talks fizzled out. I said, are you dumb? That's a fucking smoke screen. They are trying to throw you off. He's coming back. And he did. But my first idea was let's pair up Cody Rose to beat Roman Reigns. I said, it makes sense. Both guys got fathers who wrestled in wrestling. So, so I said, okay, why not? Both guys are second generation wrestlers. So that made sense, right? I said the bloodline versus Cody Rhodes bloodline. That makes sense. Listen, at the beginning of the song, he says wrestling has more than one royal family. Bro, that's a diss towards Roman Reigns and his family. That's a fun fact that you did not know. So I'm like, hold on, this makes sense. Cody Rhodes should be the one to dethrone Roman Reigns, right? This was back when I said to myself, no, there's nobody else to beat Roman. I said, bra breaker, but I said, no, he's too young. He is not ready. So I said, okay, why not Cody Rhodes? I was the only one saying Cody Rhodes should beat this guy. And I was fucking trashed for it for years. For the past two years, I've been getting hate comments, hate videos by fat boy incels. Fat boy incels, man, who don't work out, got fucking beer bellies, fucking ugly as fuck these jealous incels that are just so fucking jealous of my success that they can't beat me so they gotta make tons and tons of content about me because they can't draw shit nobody cares about their opinions about wrestling and they hate that so they want to trash me because people love my takes on fake pro wrestling this is why people take me seriously this is why i have 10 million views this is why i have 15,000 subs now we are about to hit 15,000 subs. Why is that? This was in a short time span, two years, 10 million views. Because people take me seriously when it comes to talking pro wrestling. I speak facts. I don't speak bullshit. Listen, if you don't like what I say, that means you don't know shit. Because, bro, I got proof and evidence that I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Did you see tonight? Who caught that? I caught that. 
For the past two years, I've never left the Cody Rose train. Ever. Never. I've been by this guy's side since day one. I never left. But this is so fucking satisfying, man, to, to fucking see all these Roman Lames cry babies. You got dudes saying, oh, I'm going to leave YouTube now. I'm like, okay, bitch, bye. <laughs> we don't need you. People have me <laughs> to watch. So your ass can leave, bitch. We don't need you people, right? People got me. People watch me. So this was so fucking satisfying. Fucking John Cena, Taker, fucking Jay Uso. We all helped Cody Rose win the fucking title. Bro, I got videos and videos and videos. I never gave up on Cody Rhodes. I never I never said, okay, why not go with somebody else? I said, no, bitch. Cody Rhodes is the face of this company. That's what I said. For the past two years, I never left my stance. That's why I'm credible. People take me seriously. I don't speak bullshit. But that's wild, though. Two years ago, I predicted this was going to happen. This guy was going to beat Roman Reigns. Nobody took me seriously. People thought I was trolling. Look at me now, bitch. I'm smoking on that Roman Reigns hookah pack right now. That shit tastes good as fuck. Roman Reigns tears, man. This is why I love pro wrestling. To see people cry over people you should not cry about, right? All these Roman Reigns nuts huggers. Oh my God, you guys are fucking pathetic sore losers. Just accept it. Your guy was trash. This had to happen. And no, Roman Reigns ain't no fucking draw. Who said Roman was a fucking draw? You gotta be a delusional idiot. You gotta be a fucking delusional nutjob left wing beta male to think this guy is a fucking draw. Like how? Okay, let me tell you a fun fact. Raw has been sold out 14 times in a row. Hmm, okay. Roman has only been on Raw only one time this year. That's a fun fact that nobody knows but me, right? <laughs> so how is he a draw? What is he drawing if he's not on the show to draw something, huh? This guy has only made one appearance on Raw all year long, but yet these shows are selling out. Why is that? Who is the top guy on the show? It's Cody Rhodes. My God, you don't know what I have been going through these past two years in terms of so many hate comments about Cody Rhodes, right? Saying, oh, he ain't no draw. He's going to lose at WrestleMania or he should lose at WrestleMania. My bitch, please don't watch the product. If you want a guy that don't show up as champion to be the face of your show when he don't show up, like I said, I'm consistent, right? I never said that I wanted Roman Reigns to wrestle every week. I never said that I wanted Roman Reigns to defend the belt every week. I never said that. My main issue is, okay, if you're going to defend your belt, why not do it clean? Bro, even this match was not clean. So it just goes to my point. I don't want this guy as champion. Like I said, I'm consistent. When Brock was champion, I was his biggest fan because he was dominant and he was winning his matches alone with no help. So I didn't give a fuck that he was part time. That's facts. I have an issue. If you are part time and you are cheating to win, that means you are stealing money. By that logic, why not have Dominic as the world champion and get help from Finn Balor and Dane Priest? Same thing. Dominic has more heat than Roman fucking Reigns, so I say, why not? That's what I was saying. Why can't Roman show his face every week to cut promos, tell stories backstage, set up storylines like Maxwell did in AEW with Adam Coleslaw? You don't got to wrestle every week, you fucking Mark Smarks. You don't. I never said that. I want Roman to show his fucking face and cut promos, tell stories, put guys over. Right? Fucking push storylines. That's what I was trying to do with this guy. That's all. But he didn't do it. This guy was defending his title every four months. And every time he came back, the only time he was coming back was to defend his title. That's fucking dumb. That's uncalled for. Like, dog, we don't need you. Okay, let me tell you a fun fact, right? Let's talk about the year of 2023. The biggest draw on SmackDown 
It was L.A. Knight. It was not Roman Reigns. It was L.A. Knight. It was not Roman fucking Reigns. Roman ain't no draw. Okay, that's not how that works. He ain't no draw. L.A. Knight was the biggest draw on SmackDown. Hey, bitch, that's what you fanboys were telling me about L.A. cosplay, right? So keep that same energy. You told me that he was the biggest merch pusher, right? L.A. Knight. Okay, so this is me co-signing what you said last year about your boy L.A. Knight. So I'm consistent. I don't like L.A. cosplay, but I do know this. He was on the show every week on SmackDown last year. It was not Roman Reigns. That's not how that works. You can't be a world champion. Yo ass at home for like, what, three, four months. Fucking L.A. cosplay was showing up every week getting huge pops, selling out merch. You can't take credit for his drawing power. I don't care who you are. This is me being objective. L.A. Knight was the biggest draw on SmackDown all of last year, homie. That's a fact. You can look it up. Whoever is on the show every week and the numbers look good and they are the same, that guy has to take credit. That was L.A. Knight. You can't be a part-time worker and take credit for a ratings bump. Like, who the fuck is you? Like I said, when it comes to this company, the stories draw, not the talent. When it came to L.A. Knight, he was in great storylines. That's why he was drawing. People were captivated by L.A. Knight. Hence why he won a Slammy. As the, as the quickest rising star last year. Because he was carrying SmackDown. It was not Roman Reigns. He was barely on the fucking show. So how can you say Roman is a fucking draw? That's not how that works. Right? Cody is on Raw every fucking week. Telling stories. Cutting promos. That's my point. Like I said, you don't got to wrestle every week. Cody Rhodes does not wrestle every week, but he shows up to cut promos and to tell storylines to push the show forward so we can draw numbers. That's what Cody was doing all year, the past two years. That guy was a workhorse. It's not all about the wrestling. It's about telling stories. That's what Cody Rhodes has done for the past two, three years on this show. That's my fucking point. So no, Roman Reigns ain't no draw. And let's talk about the numbers for this year's WrestleMania, bitch. WrestleMania sells out every year. The show draws. WrestleMania sells itself. People are going to show up. Celebrities, casuals, everybody shows up. They don't care who's on the card. Are you new to wrestling or something? This is the Super Bowl of wrestling. It's WrestleMania. It sells itself. Hell, I think that this show would have sold out if it was Cody Rose versus Drew Mack in the main event. That's my fucking point. People are going to show up. It's WrestleMania. Nobody is bigger than WrestleMania. The show sells itself. So are you saying that this show is not going to sell out if Roman was not on the show? Are you fucking high? Yes, you are. All Roman Reigns nut huggers are fucking left wing beta male nut jobs. Let's be real. But the point is, Nobody is a draw on both shows. The stories draw, not the talent. If you are in a great storyline, people are going to watch. That's what Triple H said a couple of days ago. You need stories. If you are not in a storyline, nobody cares about you. That's how wrestling is. And last time I checked, every time Cody Rose is in a storyline, people care and they watch. This was back when he was not a fucking champion. So let that sink in. Bruh, I'm going off on all of you Roman Reigns nuthuggers. I'm like, man, I'm glad he's gone. I'm glad he's gone, man. No more. Okay, be part-time as a non-champion. Okay, go away. I'm glad that the Vince McMahon part-time champion era is over. It's done. It's gone. Thank God. Seriously, no more. We will never see a part-time world champion ever, ever, ever again during the Triple H era. And I'm glad. No more. This is the workhorse era of fake pro wrestling. Goodbye, Roman Reigns. Okay? 
Go to fucking Hollywood. We don't need you here, bro. Go away. This is Cody Rose time, bitch. Listen, Cody Rose is a bigger draw than Roman fucking Reigns, man. That's why people pay to watch WrestleMania. They wanted to see Cody Rhodes finally finish his fucking story. Bro, I can't believe there were people that thought this guy was going to fucking lose. I said, bro, he's on the cover of a goddamn video game. A, a brand new game. So why would he lose? Are you dumb? He won back-to-back -back World Rumbles. Of course he was going to beat him. <laughs> like, what? But this was a great main event. The greatest main event of all time. But I thought... Stone Cold Steve Austin was going to show up. But hey, I will take Taker. I will take Taker. That was great shit. That was shocking. I did not know Taker was going to show up. That was great shit. John Cena, man, huge pop for John Cena. Uh, who else? Fucking um, Jey Uso, great pop. Man, Cody Rose had tons of help. Great shit. This was even, finally. This was an even matchup, right? You play fire with fire. That's what Cody Rose did. Fucking Taker, Jay, fucking um, Cena. Man, this was the greatest main event of all time, baby. But Roman, I will admit, he was great in this match. Great trash talking. Holy shit, he is a great trash talker. Um, Listen, Cody Rhodes, this guy is a new John Cena. This guy can sell his ass off as a good guy. This company will be in great hands. Why? Because he sells the most merch. Kids love him. He's over. People love his fucking song. Bruh, he's the face of the brand. Get over it. Roman Reigns had to go. Okay, he needs to leave. Okay, take care of your health. But don't rush back. We don't need you, bruh. We are good. Finally, SmackDown has a full-time world fucking champion. It's about time. Because Roman Reigns, he was fucking so overrated. Roman is overrated. Look, he ain't no draw, bruh. L.A. Knight was a bigger draw than Roman Reigns last year. What part of that don't you understand? Did you see all the merch, the fucking signs and audience? It's like, you are brain dead if you don't think that L.A. Knight was not more over than Roman Reigns last year. Are you crazy? Yes, so no. Roman is not needed anymore. He's done. He's over. We have moved on. We got L.A. Knight. We got Drew Mack. We got CF Junk. Dude, even CF Junk said that this company does not need Roman, Cody, Drew Mack, Seth. This is a machine. People are going to watch it no matter what. It don't matter who's on top of the company. People watch this show out of habit. Watching this show is a fucking lifestyle. People are going to watch no matter what. That's what CM Junk said. It don't matter who's on top. People are going to watch. Because nobody's bigger than a brand. The stories draw, not the wrestlers. That's a fact. But this was, man, a great fucking match. I was shocked to see Roman Reigns do a crossroads. That was great shit. Then Rose, that was crazy. This dude did a fucking spear. So this was a very even matchup. Very, very even. Great shit. Uh, Roman did great. This was a great fucking match. Tons of selling. Tons of storylines. Great shit. I love that um, Seth Rollins showed up. That was crazy. Seth showed up as a SHIELD member. I'm like, man, that was great shit. Um, but overall, this was possibly the greatest moment in the history of WrestleMania. This dude went from being in the mid card in all elite wrestling to beating the top guy of the company after a four, three year reign. And by the way, like I said, bitch, I knew Roman Reigns was not going to pass Huck Hogan's record. I'm like, hell no. I'm glad that Hogan's record is protected forever. Roman Reigns is not Huck Hogan. That would have been crazy. That would have been so disrespectful to the legacy of Huck Hogan. If Roman Reigns passed his record, that was wild. I'm glad Shell Blake woke up. See, if this was Vince, I think that Roman probably would have won so i'm glad vince is gone man i'm glad he, <laughs> bro i'm glad vince the man is gone new era better era better booking better storylines this is a great era that we need we don't need roman fucking reigns look man we got braun breaker okay we have talent we got cody rose braun 
Drew Mac, the Mac Daddy, CM Junk, um, Seth. We got talent. Listen, everybody in the building wanted Cody Rose to win. And no, bitch, he was not booed. People were saying, Cody, Cody, for the whole match. This dude is over. Listen, bitch, he's not Kofi Kingston. He's not Daniel Bryan. My God, you people are high. Stop watching wrestling. Stop it. Stop. Watch something else if Cody Rose bothers you. That's facts. He's not Daniel Bryan. He's not Eddie Guerrero. He's not Kofi Kingston. He's not Sami Zayn. This guy, he's the face of the company. He's John Cena. He's going to be a multiple time world champion. This first run is not going to define him. My God, every anti-smart who is a Roman Reigns dick sucker. That's their go-to quote. That's their go-to line is, oh, we are going to turn on Cody Rhodes. Okay, by that same logic. Why didn't we turn on Cody Rhodes last year? We, bro, we had every right to turn on Cody Rhodes last year. Why didn't we? See, this is a two-year build. Okay, let's talk about Kofi Kingston. That was not a two-year build. That was a, what, a fucking four-month build. Fucking, if that. Let's talk about Daniel Bryan. That was maybe a six-month build. This is a two-year build ever since he came back to the company. And how come people have not turned on him yet, right? People have not booed him. People have not turned their backs on him yet. After two years of being a top guy that never loses. Bro, he's only lost three times in two years. And the fans have not turned their backs on him yet. So when are we? Right? Just, bro, just stay crying. Roman Reigns, he's gone. We don't need him. So... Keep crying. Cody is the face of the company. He's the new John Cena. That's the difference. Roman, he passed the torch to Cody Rhodes. That's the difference between him, Kofi, and Daniel Bryan. Kofi was never called the face of the brand. Let's talk about Daniel Bryan. He was never called the face of the company. By that same logic, why is he in all elite wrestling? Right? So... Please, shut the fuck up. Just accept it. Cody Rhodes is the face of this company. But, man, that was crazy seeing John Cena and fucking Rocky Maivia. That was a great standoff. Great shit. Man, I love John Cena. He is so unselfish. Him, Taker, man, that was great seeing the fucking Undertaker. That was, man, that was a great moment. That was shocking. But, hey, fuck it. I will take the Undertaker any day of the week. But this was a great show. So, what are my thoughts about Drew Mack beating Seth Rollins for the world title? Like I said, this is why I have 15,000 subs and over 10 million views. Because I don't talk bullshit. I talk facts and evidence. I have the best mind in this business, right? I will say, what, maybe two months ago. I was the first one to say that Drew Mack the fucking Mac Daddy was going to beat Seth Rollins for the world title at WrestleMania. And guess what, bitch? He did it. I got videos to prove it. I said, the moment CM Junk got hurt, I said, okay, let's push Drew Mac to beat Seth Rollins. And that's what he did. You see, this is why I'm the GOAT at talking about wrestling. Nobody is better. Because I'm like 10 steps ahead of you. I saw this coming. The moment CM Junk got injured and Drew Max said, bruh, I was praying for you to get hurt. I said, wow, this dude is a great fucking heel. Let's push him. And that's what they did. They pushed him as a top heel on Raw. Now, you got to keep in mind, Drew Mack was going nowhere before the World Rumble. So, like I said, I have the best mind. I'm like, bro, I am a walking lotto. Seriously, I am a human lotto when it comes to wrestling and calling it. I caught this. The moment he got hurt, I said, bro, let's push Drew Mack, the fucking Mac Daddy. And guess what? He beat Seth Rollins. But let's talk about how fucking Dave Priest cashed in. Now, I'm mad about that. I'm pissed. I'm pissed off, man, that Dane Priest cashed in. I'm like, oh my God, 
why didn't he cash in on Goose Earl? I didn't get a L. Because here's why. Dane Priest is going to be a transitional champion. I hope you know that, right? Jumak will beat him for that world title. Jumak, the fucking Mac Daddy, he will win back his belt from Dane Priest. I don't know when, but he will. Dane Priest will be a transitional champion. It's not going to last long. Dane Priest is not world title material. He's not. He's boring. Okay? He's going to prove it. I guarantee it. He's going to prove why he is boring. So, my next prediction is Jumak will beat Dane Priest for the world title. He will get that belt back this summer. I guarantee it. Why? Because he is in a feud with CM Junk. So, obviously, he is going to win back his belt. So, CM Junk can't beat him for it. But, to make a long story short, fuck CM Junk. He ruined our dreams. That's what he did. He ruined Ju Mac's moment and he ruined my moment. Damn, man. I was happy that Ju Mac beat Seth for the title. Damn, man. Look, man. CM Junk is a fucking hater. Like, holy shit. I mean, this dude cost Ju Mac the world title. I'm like, dude, what a fucking hater. Man, that, that was whack. So, what are my thoughts on Lashley, the Prophets, versus Ken Cross and his crew? That was a solid, fun match. I was shocked that they brought back Bubba Ray Dudley. That was great shit. That was a great story. Great moment. I loved seeing Bubba back in the World Wrestling Federation. But man, that fucking Montez Ford, man, he is crazy athletic. But overall, this was a great match. It was solid. Solid match. Solid, fun match. Um, These were the right winners. Lashley and the Profits, the right winners won this match. It was a solid, fun match. Uh, What do I think about L.A. Knight versus AJ Styles? Man, it was crazy because I made a video, i say, I think, two days ago. It was a shorts. I said in that video, I said, man, AJ hates L.A. Knight because, dude, this dude flew all the way to Australia just to whoop this guy's ass. I'm like, bro, that means you don't like this guy. And guess what? Corey Graves, bro, he said it. Corey Graves repeated what I said on commentary. Come on, man. That, that's a weird coincidence, <laughs> right? I was the first one to point that out. I'm like, damn, AJ, your ass flew, all, bro, he flew halfway across the world just to beat up LA Knight. That's how you know you don't like this guy, <laughs> right? That's crazy. That's fucking dedication, <laughs> right? But this was a great match. Like, honestly, I think this was L.A. Knight's best match on the main roster. That's facts. This was his best match. This was a very physical match. I liked it. But yeah, bruh, if you fly halfway across the world just to whoop, just to whoop somebody's ass, yeah, but yeah, man, that means you don't like them. This was a very, very good feud. I loved it. But, um... This was his best match so far on the main roster. L.A. Knight. Um, I think he was the right winner. Like, honestly. I think AJ can take a loss at WrestleMania. Because he's AJ. He is bulletproof. So, I think the most underrated match on the night was Logan Paul, Randy, and KO. This was a great match. Very, very fun match. Look, man. This Logan Paul... He is the future. He, he, bruh, this dude is a future world champion. This dude is the real deal. Facts. The real deal. This was a fun match. Bruh, I was shocked that they brought in I Show Speed. That was shocking. Because I thought that was KSI. So I'm like, whoa. They brought I Show Speed. And, and listen, he took a great RKO. That was, that was a great RKO on the table. Great shit. But overall... Dang, man, this Logan Paul, he gets better and better and better. Like I said, he's better than Adam Page. He's way better than Adam Hangman Page. But I did call it, though. I knew Logan Paul was going to win his match because it makes sense. Yeah, I said it last week. I said that Logan Paul is going to retain his title. Um, Listen, I think his next opponents are going to be probably Ricochet and L.A. Knight. I think those are going to be his next opponents. Why? Because it was not time to make Logan Paul drop that belt. It was not time yet. Why? Because KO don't need it. 
Orton don't need it. Like, honestly, I think KO and Orton are going after the tag team titles. That's why Theory and Austin won those tag team titles. They are going to get beaten by Orton and KO. So, what are my thoughts about super thick Bailey beating EO Sky? Um, that was the best outcome, and Bailey was my winner heading into WrestleMania. I knew Bailey was going to beat her. Why? Because it was time for EO to drop that belt. But overall, this was a very solid match. It was very nice. Very, very nice match. And the rightful winner won, which was super thick Bailey. She was the right winner. I think she will be a better champion than Sky was. Way better. That title needs a, a, a bigger name to bring it back to more prestige, which is super thick Bailey. So what do I grade this WrestleMania night to? This was a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. This was a great fucking show. Because every winner was justified. And I'm glad that Cody Rose finally finished the fucking story. And bruh, bruh, even the damn announcer was, was uh, crying. Who was her name? I think um, her name is Samantha. Yeah, bruh, she was crying when she announced him as the winner. Why? Because everybody in the building wanted Cody Rose to beat him. So this was an overall great night of fake pro wrestling and I'm done.